My name is Sean Chapin, and I am a gay man here in California. We recently just passed the Fair Education Act, which ensures that LGBT history is fairly taught in our schools, and those who oppose us are now gathering signatures on petitions to try to repeal this law on the June 2012 ballot, kind of like how Prop 8 took away marriage from gay couples here a few years ago. Our state equality leaders have said that the chances of defending SB 48 in a public vote are very slim. And one of the reasons that they have cited is apathy from the LGBT community. I disagree. I think that we've got what it takes to win SB 48 in a public vote, and I believe that we have the care and passion to see this through in the face of ignorance and bigotry. But just in case I am too optimistic for my own good, for those who believe that our community cares about other things, here are four reasons to care about SB 48 and defending it from bigotry. Number one, think about our children because our children are also LGBT, just like us, and they will benefit immeasurably from this law while they are in school. Don't forget, we were once children too, and we remember what it was like growing up in schools that ignored LGBT subject matters, which then fostered homophobic environments, which then led to anti-gay bullying. And we were the lucky ones, because for some it was so rough going through school, home, and church, that it was too much to bear, and they took their own lives before getting the chance to become adults like us. Seth Walsh lived in a town called Tehachapi, which is about 40 miles east of Bakersfield. He was bullied ferociously at his middle school since he was perceived to be gay, and he hung himself while only 13 years old, because he thought there was no other way. His suicide was one of a string of LGBT teen suicides that became news this time last year and rocked our nation. Because we cared, so many of us responded to this crisis by making videos on YouTube to reach out to LGBT students and let them know that it gets better in hopes of helping them get through this challenging time. But we know that we can go even farther and try to make it better for our students. And possibly the most fundamental way that we could achieve this is to get our schools to teach LGBT history in our classrooms. In fact, a school in North London in Great Britain started teaching gay history about five years ago, and now they have more or less eliminated homophobic bullying. If this is indicative of what would happen everywhere, then passing SB 48 is a no-brainer. Number two, think about Prop 8. When Prop 8 passed a couple of years ago, taking away the right of marriage from gay Californians, what happened next can only be described as the great awakening of our LGBT community, second only to the Stonewall Riots, as 100,000 people gathered in front of public buildings all around the country rallying for equality, and a year later, 200,000 people descended upon Washington, D.C., marching for equal protections across our nation. Since then, personal stories of LGBT inequality have surfaced and grabbed the American consciousness like never before, including stories such as Constance McMillan wanting to take her girlfriend to the prom, Zach Walls defending his parents' marriage in Iowa, and Lieutenant Dan Choi giving his West Point graduate ring to Senator Harry Reid until the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy was repealed. These events give a glimpse at the acceleration of our LGBT movement toward equality, and we have made amazing gains, including the passage of the Federal Hate Crimes Bill, the repeal of the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy, marriage for gay couples in five additional states, including the District of Columbia, and now the historic passage of California's Fair Education Act. These gains are realized in no small part due to the rapid evolution of American attitudes toward LGBT people, and American attitudes are changing because we are coming out and talking to them, sharing our stories so they can connect back to us as human beings. When we make these kind of connections, there is nothing that can stop us. And that's something to think about in defending SB 48. Number 3. Think about Harvey Milk. Quite possibly the most iconic gay rights activist in American history, Harvey Milk proved that we as an LGBT people can defend ourselves in the public vote designed to take our equality away, as we successfully defeated the Briggs Initiative that would have outlawed gay people from working as public school teachers. And Harvey Milk also showed how important it is to never give up and never stop believing in yourself, because though he may have lost a couple of times in campaigning to become an elected official, he persevered, and on the fourth time, he made San Francisco history. And think about his most famous quote. It's about giving those young people out there in the Altoona, Pennsylvania's hope. You gotta give them hope. 
Here we are, 30 years later, the ones who have the hope that Harvey gave. And now it's our turn to pass this hope down to our next generation. And I couldn't imagine a more poetic way than for our children to learn about Harvey Milk in our schools and to find out from their teachers that Harvey Milk lived his life to give them hope. With the passing of the Fair Education Act, this opportunity becomes reality. Number four, think about this. Gay is right. That's right. Gay is right. Lesbian is right. Straight is right. Bisexual is right. Transgender is right. Put another way, we are good, we are beautiful, we are pure, and we are moral. The bigots out there say that we are bad, evil, wrong, sinful, disgusting, immoral, and that is wrong. We are who we are, and we love who we love, and that makes us right. That's why marriage is right. That's why SB 48 is right. Because we are right. Because if we can't talk about being LGBT in our schools, then that must make us bad, wrong, evil, sinful, disgusting, immoral. And we know that is wrong. Or do we? Some of us still live our lives with internalized homophobia. Some of us are scared to make that giant leap and say something this profound because they fear what will happen next. It is the fear that if we open ourselves to the world, bigotry will rise and seize our population with ignorance and fear, and we could be persecuted. It is also the fear that if we open ourselves without shame, hearts and minds might change toward us, and we would be respected. The fear is that we don't know what will happen, but if there is something that we do know from our ancestors, it is that we should never live our lives in fear, because in this fear of the unknown, here we find hope, because there is something that we do know. Gay is right. Because if we took to the streets after Prop 8 took away our marriage rights, then we know that gay is right. Because if our children died in their own hands with homophobia and bigotry, then they know that gay is right. Because if Harvey Milk once said, I have tasted freedom after losing his first election, then he knew that gay is right. And we must carry Harvey's message forward and reach out to the kids facing this bigotry and let them know loud and clear that transgender is right, that bisexual is right, that lesbian is right, that straight is right, that gay is right, that we are all right. It is time that our children learn the truth about us. But we can only do that if people like you and me come out and stand up for what is right.